Should we, we should probably start the podcast. Hey guys, Searchable is Reptiles. Welcome back. My name is Garrett Hartle, Reach Out Reptiles. This is Brian Cusco, Triple B Reptiles, Searchable is Reptiles, Brian Cusco Vlogs Channel, Freedom Breeder Channel. Wow. Uh, sorry, I was going to keep going. Whiskey Wimps on YouTube. And you can, where are you at on this podcast right now? If you are listening audibly, 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 please let us know <laughs> that somewhere. I don't know where because you can't really leave com- You can't really leave comments on a lot of the audio platforms. No, but you know to. what? We have our own p- group page on Facebook. You can join, which is a cool community. It's searchable as reptiles community on Facebook, where you can actually talk with us. And that's where you can let us know that you're whether or not you're listening to this on audio, or if you're watching the video on YouTube, and the lights that I set up. So <laughs> Okay, so here's one thing that we do on this podcast. If you guys are just joining us for the first time, we have some drink sponsors, which today are sponsored by Searchable as Reptiles. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a couple of drinkable ones here. My Mine is uh, Buffalo Trace, great go-to drinkable little whiskey there. And uh, Brian's got the Double Oak Sagamore Spirit Rye. That's pretty fun. I don't know, Brian, do you want to talk any more about those? Uh, well... You got yours for MSRP, which is always commendable, and I got mine for less than MSRP, which is outstanding. So that was fantastic. Congratulations, yeah. you I'm win. Pretty happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then, but bigger than the drink sponsor, if you guys ever want to get a shout out on here, you can sponsor us. We sponsored our own selves this time because of our lack of planning, um, which is fine. And then we got what we wanted, so we're fine with that. Um, but then more than that, we do a location sponsor. So even when we were on bill on your live stream on CMB's Instagram, yes. someone's like, Hey, you know, you should come out to our pets to shop and do that. What they might not know is that you guys location sponsored this podcast. And right. it's not the first time. Right. Yeah. I think it's the third time. It's technically, <laughs> te- it's technically the second time. Oh, we gave although you, although a- you have had us out three times. We, yeah. The other one was for like a, do okay, we podcast we came three with- times here though? Tw- no, this is the second time. Only the second. We came yeah, out with think so, Dave and Clint right. for your grand opening. Right. That, yeah. that was the third time we came out, but we, it wasn't a location sponsorship that time, but it was kind of like the same way. So, so, <laughs> so what the way that that works, guys, is that we have a set price on that, and you guys can reach out to us on that Facebook group or get a hold of Brian or myself, and we can talk about that. But um, we're, we're cheap whores, and we will come podcast from your location if you pay to make that happen. So we have a set price that we do that, and, you know, we've had a lot of people talk. I, you know, I'm actually a little bit disappointed that more people haven't done some of the ideas they've told me they were going to do. Mm. Like, there was one group of five guys that are like, let's all just split the price and chip in and make Brian and Garrett come to our house. And we totally would have done that. Absolutely. Yeah, like you said, cheap whore. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, um, but you guys brought us out. And for those of you guys that are regular listeners, you probably remember Bill and Caleb Cavender from C and B Reptiles, the Caleb and the Bill of the C and the B, except now maybe it's captive bread, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and on the last location sponsorship, we gave you guys like your little 10 or 15 minute spot to do a spiel at the yep. beginning and let us know. And then we diverged into other stuff. But over the past six months or so, I think we've gotten to know you guys pretty well. Right. Yeah. And if there's one thing that's for sure is that everybody in this room very much enjoys each other's company, I think, you know, at least speaking for me. 150%. 100%. So we haven't had any. Drone in the corner is kind of creeping me out right now. But other than that, yeah, we're good. No, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Yeah, but I'm down with that. I like, I I always got to have one creepy guy. That's why I was trying to look at you under the mic like that. (laughs) Oh, snap. (laughs) Okay, well, check check that uh, visual variance on Instagram. (laughs) Deron Guerrero. Doing fantastic work with uh, feed training and, and ball training with reticulated pythons that he's going to be posting. He posts more and more content about that, which is cool. Just became the drink sponsor for uh, this episode. So. Now, now Duran <laughs> is a big fan of Eagle Rare since he came to the Retic Fest at my house or whatever. But what do you think about this Buffalo Trace? Like, kind of like Eagle Rare's oh, little brother. Ooh, this is some good stuff right there. Yeah. Yeah, thank you then for the Buffalo Trace. That's very yeah, good. Now welcome. you can try this one that he likes. I like this too, but you probably won't like it at all. They weren't going to share it with me unless I drink sponsored it. So, I think, uh, I think you got some before you drink sponsored it, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you're so eager to do it. <laughs> so here's the their treat for you guys that are listening right now. Um, Bill and Caleb are just good people. 
And so instead of just doing the regular spiel, we haven't had anyone on the podcast for a while because we kind of, well, that's not true. That's not Adam true just did. Yeah. <laughs> this is why we don't let Garrett control the facts and like the oh, timing and the like what actually disease. happens in real well, life. Okay, you and I had a conversation about, you know what? I'm we tired don't of have guests, guests for a while. Yes, we were tired of guests and we stopped having guests because and we then, didn't want to have guests. Until we, we spur the, the moment, we decided had. to get Adam and Wicked. Well, kind of here because you guys weren't actually guests. We were just in your back. We had you do your yeah. spot because you were a location sponsor. Yep. But then we just took took advantage of your fire pit and went and deep into our own stuff about Mr. Rogers and Martin Luther King. Sure, yeah, All yeah. kinds of other deep topics. That, that were, it was actually one of my favorite, I don't know if it was that one or the one before, I think it was that night in the barbecue pit. I was like, at the end of the podcast, I was like, this. No, it was the, was it that one or uh, was it the uh, one? Well, hold on, it was we the can't other one in Phoenix. facts about history and whatnot. It was the other one in Phoenix. We were at the pool at the Airbnb that you said that. No, you're mistaken. You're right. I can't, I can't remember anything. So th- that was actually the one where I was like, this is the podcast I've been this wanting to the have. the best podcast. And what was the name nature. of it? What episode was that? Do you remember? So they can oh, go back something and Something about fire. Definitely something about fire. Because the yeah, first time we... I remember that too. Yeah, after that time, I was like, I, I want to do... Podcast we had, around, we the around the fire. Pit. Pit. It was just the. It had the vibe of like I would always want. Except for now it's summer in Phoenix. So we're <laughs> yeah, that was. That was we like, don't oh, have do a fire. Really was fire. <laughs> March. Yeah, I was. And the, right. sun was down, yeah. and the sun oh, was going down, and the fire yeah, went perfect. up, and the sun went down, and it was just, and the conversation got deeper. Yeah, and uh, it, it was, it was really. Well, that's kind of usually the way it goes. We were so we have you guys on here not to rattle off about C and B as much, which I mean we can get into whatever you guys want. But the truth of the matter is we, we're just excited to hang with you guys and yeah, see where same. the conversation goes. Yeah, it's been a bit too long, I think. Well, Since the thing the last that, time we were all together, yeah. I know we went and visited Garrett's facility, which was awesome. Yeah, I'm not jealous of that or nothing now like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> now that we're all back together, though, it's good to have the original four back. Brian only has what, one real been, super dwarf, so. It's been what? March. It was yeah, March, March when is, they came out. That's a pretty long time. Yeah, we well, then we came out for April for the, uh, grand, for the opening. grand opening. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying from the first time though, that's we've known each other for a bit now. We've and seen excited. you more than we've seen our wives. And, <laughs> guys, come on. <laughs> Not true for me, Harlan. I don't know what you're doing over there. I have no idea what you do when you leave my presence, but I've seen my wife a lot more than these guys. I promise you that. Sorry, Ashley. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I try to get Ashley to come on this trip, to be fair. Uh, we need to get them on the podcast. Because Dana is, is, so Caleb, your mom, obviously mm. Bill, your wife, she's probably one of the coolest people mm. on the planet. Yeah, I, I would not, I, I apologize, but kind of not really. Like, Dana is cooler than both of you guys. Oh, yeah, she <laughs> is, 100%. <laughs> she's I agree. Yeah, she's I'm about saying, half I'm as cool. I'm not saying you guys aren't cool. It's just a testament to how cool your mom he's and your clearly wife clearly homozygous is. not cool, but he's like had her as I guess cool. Yeah, I got, I no, got half of her, so I don't know. I, I, I think cool. I think you're mistaken. <laughs> you're I think the big A, big A. He's a big A, little A over there. <laughs> no, we no, had that no, conversation honestly, dude, last night. That woman is awesome. She's a freaking cool-ass lady. She's a rock at the shop. I mean, she holds down that register and she she holds that shop together um she's kind of taken charge on animal care uh, she does delegate a lot of it but um she's she's it's on it i mean it. she's absolutely yeah. on it so i can go and do other things and and try to progress with the with and she's, just, she's just on it with a vibe too i mean regardless of how good she obviously is as mm-hmm. you're saying about doing that stuff just like she's just solid she's yeah a she's, solid character she's, man she's smooth like, sailing yeah she's awesome dude i mean i don't i haven't known her nearly as long as you guys <laughs> i mean even though your entire life yeah. i've known her for like a few hours at, at a time but um no no she's cool and then obviously you guys are cool dude the the music stuff like the just the vibe is good with you guys, man. I told you that the first time we're hanging out. <laughs> yeah, it's always good. It's it is. Always You've been good. hanging out too much already today. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, too much. Uh, about that. That's been it's been good, man. I I appreciate the vibes that you guys share, man. Yeah, it's, I, I, it's always a great time having you guys out here. I love getting closer with you guys. It's, yeah. That's what I want for good times. That's what I want for everything. That's what I want for everybody involved for in the hobby and the fact that you guys are gonna set the precedent. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For the captive bread stuff and kind of take a stance. Yeah. I like being involved with the what is the ground kind of the ground of that like yeah. ground zero you know 100 percent. and well how do, awesome. how do you guys so all right are you guys just gonna like how are you what are your plans for attaining these animals like because you guys came to me and said listen i know you don't really sell your snakes reach mm-hmm. out reptile snakes through mm-hmm. pet shops because we sell them usually direct to the public you know but you guys really wanted to display those good bloodlines i love the your ideas behind it for the shop and everything. So that's how you guys found me. How does that 
scale now. Maybe I was your guinea pig, yeah? Like the experiment for that, like top bread, top captive bread, whatever. I wouldn't say guinea pig. (laughs) Well, I mean, for the captive bread side, for getting breeders offering, because I'll tell you what you guys do differently. Garrett Garrett is also one of the most willing guinea pigs on the planet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) you can test, probe, and pop me however you want. But... um, no, I mean, see, here's what you guys do differently, and part of the reason why I work with you guys, you're not flipping these animals. Right. You're not saying, hey, let me get your extra crap that mm-hmm. you can't sell, mark it up, and sell it as C&B reptiles. Yeah. All of my animals that you guys are selling came with the same hatch certificates right. that I give my customers, the same answers, the same quality care, the same access to our community yep. of keepers where you can... Go on our website and find the brothers and sisters of your animals. That's, that's so it's all so above cool. the board. Like every everyone knows mom and dad of those animals as though they bought it from a breeder, but they have the advantage. Like what they can't, what my customers can't usually do is come to my house and fondle all the snakes mm-hmm. and pick the one they like and go home. But they can do that at your shop mm-hmm. with Reach Out Reptiles Animals. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Right. Plus yeah. they don't pay shipping. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. exactly. I, I'm also honored that you guys are going to have a couple animals for me pretty soon. Because Whoa, I, I like how you just threw that, that out there and committed them to it. Uh-huh, no, uh-huh. We, we talked about it in the morning. Oh, yes. come on. That sounds like a total, like, Brian just <laughs> no, sneaking it Come in. on, dude. That's no. more your style. I would never do that. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, you're going to find picking it back and off Garrett's vibe a little bit with it. But it, it's the same type of thing, like... Any of the animals that I produce, they've all been on video and mom and parents have been shown. Like yeah. every single clutch that I hatch, I show all the animals. We show mom and dad and the names of mom and dad and all that stuff is in there too. So I do have at least that. I, I know for sure I, my marketing level is not where Garrett's is when it comes to selling snakes, 100%. I know that for a fact. However... I do at least have that. Like, whatever animals you guys happen to have at the shop, somebody can definitely go on video and watch yeah. us hold it on a video and be like, here's mom and dad, here's why we like this snake. And so I'm, I'm happy that you guys, because uh, I wasn't going to push it at all. I wasn't going to be like, well, why don't you guys take some of my animals? You got Garrett's animals over there. And then, <laughs> uh, in fact, I said, take Justin. I said, if you're going to do stuff like that, Justin, Kabilka is the place mm-hmm. to go. Like, to be, if you have a featured breeder's animals at your place that when it comes to ball buy. pythons, Justin, that's what I said. I mean, it's no secret that Justin's. Like, I think is doing ball pythons better than anybody else. Um, And I don't care. Well, but that kind of brings it back around to like, okay, so if you're going to sell Brian's animals, how are you going to find these captive bred animals? I'm going to do a lot of research. Um, We have a lot of breeders locally that uh, I've been starting out with, and uh, we've tried to support the breeders the uh, best we can. Uh, You guys remember the little party we had the night before? Um, the opening, and we had uh, we had a breeders reception there, and and then you guys were all there, and they all got to meet you guys and Clint and Dave Kaufman, and it was a great event. But ever since the from the get go, we have made the conscious decision to support and promote our breeders rather than try and just bury them in the closet and not tell people where these animals come from. I want to give them as much information as I can, which is a part of the reason that we're moving to full captive bred as soon as possible. Mm. And as we kind of go through that, it's going to just really be kind of asking around, like how we did with you, Garrett, trying to see who would be willing to sell us their animals in our shop because we're trying to really be only captive bred. That was one of our main goals when we first started, but... Obviously, that's kind of hard to do off the rip. You got to build a lot of relationships till you're fully there, but it's slowly happening. It's a lot like uh, whiskey, actually, believe it or not. Like this stuff right here Mm -hmm. is sourced from a place called MGP in Indiana that produces Mm -hmm. a bunch of whiskey. And this company, this is their brand, and they just source it there because they haven't, they're not old enough to where they've made their own spirit and they have a bunch of stuff going where they can bottle their own stuff and they do it kind of like that. They they get other people's. spirit and then mark as their own until they have their own stuff that's aging long enough to do not that that's exactly a match for what you're doing because you're not like you're right. going to produce all of your own animals in-house that's mm-hmm. a little insane um it's not that it's impossible but for a, you know it's not a smaller shop size what size wise is yours it's not that you have space to breed every species yeah you'd need a- or even experience but going to people like garrett that really know their species like to a t and find them like that and as garrett mentioned last night i mean we can we know plenty of people that are producing yeah. species you might be looking for that are mm-hmm. maybe not that easy to find, not just readily available out there, but that's the way to do it, I think. I, I'm, again, super excited about 
watching that unfurl and yeah. set the precedent for it. Am I, oh, am I talking too much right no, now? No, no, no. just make inside a little joke. motion like I'm talking too much? Was, in, inside <laughs> joke between are me you and Dron. Dron. You're fine. <laughs> this is a podcast. You're supposed to talk. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that was not what you think. That was not uh, what you, you think. You guys have your little inside joke. Right? It I'll, I'll let it slide joke. since Duran was the whiskey sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think it's cool. I, I'm yeah. really looking forward to like how it goes because it's gonna be it's gonna do something better for everybody. It's gonna step up the, it's gonna make it more respectful. It's gonna make it more respectful in the eyes of the general public. I think yeah. even more so than it than it's been working towards. You know, compared to when we were kids, it's a lot more commonplace now. To oh, have so much better. Mm -hmm. way, but way better. you know, I say forget the eyes of the general public. It's just good for the animals. Yes. Right. Here, here's the big question. Yes. So I have a question for you, Caleb. Mm -hmm. You know. Is this like I would assume that you guys probably have some pretty good connections for the really commonly bred stuff, yeah, right? So of kind of those the the top ten species maybe that you find if you go to a reptile show or top yeah. five or whatever. But if someone has something obscure, because right now what you guys have, and honestly, they're not even the wild caught stuff. A lot of it is captive bred. But like when I walk into C and B reptiles, difference between that and any other reptile specialty shop, like right biggest first thing you notice is like you you and me were walking through there uh yesterday and you guys have all different reptiles than you had when you opened because mm -hmm. you've sold stuff and got new stuff but you walk around you're like you got one of these dude you got one of these dude you got one the of these all in giant one pillage? leaf tailed gecko dude you're a platus the oh. monstrous like oh my god just so many beauty Sick. snakes and so here's my question mm -hmm. uh if if people are breeding something and, and really specializing, trying to do a good job, can they reach out to you guys somewhere? Do, I mean, are you guys taking yeah, like... Yeah, of kinda... course. We're always looking to support locally first, locally before anything. I think that's been our goal from the get-go has been that's local cool. support. I mean, pretty much 90%, I think we only have one or two boas that aren't produced by our friends in the shop. Chad Tice and uh, as well as Brad Sherman and the last one, Marcos Bajar. They've been our like three. Chad Tice and Marcos Bajar have been like our main have been like our main boa guides since we kind of when Bill and I started liking boas. So yeah. they wanted to sell to us right away, and I really enjoy their. Cool. I think they have quality boas. Brad Sherman really does some cool high end oh, that, stuff. That sun glow you guys have yeah. in the shop right now. The sun glow is really level. beautiful. Yeah, he did a good job with that. Yeah, was that from him? That last night. That um, was a gorgeous one. Is, is the sun glow from Brad Sherman? No, actually, the sun glow is from Joshua Brown, um, the owner of West Valley Reptiles oh, nice. in Phoenix. Nice. That's See, where we right got here, that. Here's one. the other thing that is doing what you guys are about to embark on it's just tying the community of reptile keepers and enthusiasts together even more. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Which is huge. A well, big, I don't, important part of making this a successful thing is having everybody working together towards a common goal. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I, and I don't know if most people notice this, but like a lot of the pet shops and reptile shops, like the suppliers they get them from, it's all like the same, say, five sources. Yeah. Just nationwide. Yep. You know what I mean? I would say like probably Five reptile suppliers. This is totally made up information, so don't quote me on this. But I was going to add, they, mm -hmm. and they probably don't even support U.S. Arc. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. What I'm saying is, there's like you know, kind of some major reptile importers that supply all the reptile shops across the country. Yeah. So a vast majority of the reptiles are coming from these few sources, mm -hmm. which. Kind of means everybody has sort of the same reptiles, sort of the same quality, sort of the same prices, mm -hmm. unless they have a higher markup or something. Yep. But by working with local breeders, you can actually mix it up a lot more. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that? So like, okay, so you'll notice this when a certain country opens up the most. Like, oh, Madagascar is importing, uh, exporting again. And suddenly every pet shop has a bunch of random stuff from Madagascar. Yep. And then that stuff dries up. Like, it's funny. I bought Madagascan diving skinks, Amphiglossus water lottie, or I think they're reticulatus now. But um, these is things it, are is like... Is it because of the reticulatus that really... No, I like them better as water lottie. They used to be two, and they grouped them together. But anyway, um, these things are like... like uh, they're like a media, like a little bit smaller blue tongue skink, but swims like a seal underwater. 
That's pretty cool. They're crazy. And I was like, oh, all these things. And I could never find them, as is the case with Madagascan species. They're like export a whole bunch of stuff and then shut down. You don't see anything for five or 10 years. And then they get a bunch of them again. So I got these things. I think I paid like oh, probably a thousand bucks a piece or something for these things. But mine were like third generation captive bred, awesome little skinks. Mm -hmm. And then I paid like a thousand bucks a piece. And then Madagascar opened again and you could see them at, like we found them at our local like small time reptile uh, expo in Pittsburgh and they're like 30 bucks, but they oh look God. like crap. They don't have their tail. They all have like regrown tails. They're scrawny and full of parasites. Yeah. And I never bought one. I never bought a single one because I was like, I don't want to like, I'm trying to master the husbandry of my captive bred reptiles right now and trying to add to that the garbage that comes with an import. And the sad thing is, I had this species. I'm familiar with this species. Yeah. I had actually bred that species. You know, I was already at that point. And I didn't feel qualified to take on these wild caught ones. I thought that they would probably not thrive under my care. Meanwhile, they're 40 bucks or something like that. So some rando got those animals and yeah. watched it die. Dude, my, yep. my first, and that might have been their first experience with reptiles. My very yeah. first reptile was a rough green snake when I was four years old. And guaranteed, it was wild caught right here in the United States, and it did not make it. I wish someone kept to breed those in numbers. Those are cool. They're very cool. Yeah. Super cool little snakes. Just another example of how someone, you, you could eat, <laughs> like people ask me, like, well, how'd you get to where you are today with super dwarves? And I was like, well, nobody else seemed to give a shit. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, do you know how hard it would be to be the nation's largest breeder of rough green snakes? You just have, like, a clutch, and you're done. I, I mean, or a litter. I don't even know. Are those la <laughs> egg-laying or live-bearing? I think they're egg-laying, well, but I'm not sure. They, they're insect, insectivores. Which yep. is cool. Yep. So if you're like, hey, check it out. I got rough greens over here, smooth greens over here. Maybe the southern or northern ones are greener or yellower. Mm. I don't even know. But, oh, my God, here's an idea, free idea for anyone out there. Please, somebody, establish ringneck snakes in captivity. Yeah. They're amazing. They got a million uh, species, subspecies, localities, and morphs. And they're super tiny. You they're, could keep them in, like, the tiniest little I mean, things would be, gallon. yeah, would be a mansion for them. You could have a colony of them in there. And they have incredible behaviors, amazing color. I just think people are like, oh, yeah, I want a reptile. So I guess this one top five species thing must be the thing for me. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, my gosh, you guys think outside the box. I don't know. How did you guys get it? You guys saw the little snake discovery build or whatever yeah. thing? Yes. One of the things I said, I built the barn thing. And I was like, because I used to go kick over wood and mm -hmm. find well not used to i still do that i went out with jeff lem and we checked his board line you know yep. you find them in like barns you find them under logs yeah. you find them at the railroad i took you guys yep. herping for the first time right that was and, epic yeah i would say that i was surprised you didn't have any sheet metal in there because that would have I just like yeah, the icing on the cake. Yeah. Well, you actually predicted you were really close when you were like, Garrett's going to build something all out of sheet metal. <laughs> and I used pallet wood instead. But you're pretty freaking close. <laughs> I, 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 just, I don't know if you remember. I detracted deten attention away from your statement because I was like, oh, he knows too much. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, that was the part of my the reasoning behind my build was like I wanted to bring it back to basics. When I was a kid, this is how I got into reptiles. And I hope whoever gets it is either a kid getting into reptiles or an older kid at heart who can look at that and remember how they got into reptiles. But how mm -hmm. did you guys get into reptiles? That's what I want to know. We asked that last time on the podcast. You don't, your freaking memory needs some work, dog. <laughs> well, you <laughs> I mean, I don't deny that, but yeah. It's like, go ahead, go ahead and it's let like the first time again. watching a movie that you've seen 10 times already. <laughs> I, I don't remember how this goes. I, when I uh, was graduating high school, I bought a baby ball python. I just went, it was in a pet store, not a reptile this. store. Did he say this last time? All right. And hey, uh, yeah, I raised it. Not what it is. <laughs> And I, I sold it by the time I graduated college, and uh, my son got into reptiles, and I, I jumped in with both feet, and uh, we just kind of had the same interests, and so we started touring the shops regularly in the valley. Yeah. 
it was really, I think, once I started kind of breeding crested geckos and just selling them. I mean, just for a little Did he have reptiles cash. when you started doing that? Yeah. So he, because I mean, obviously you're ball by then in high school or whatever. But, yeah. So you guys already had reptiles in the house and stuff, but it was yeah, more we your had, dad's. Yeah, thing. we had had reptiles in the house, but we had never really established the thought of selling them to the public. Yeah. But I think maybe this is what Blossom did. I think it was, was when I started selling Cresties because he just had them in the cage. He had a little group of uh, just a male and a female in the cage, but I would regularly check up on them. And then I found the eggs and just incubated them and hatched them. That was what, like two years ago. And As can, one does with crested geckos. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I fell in love with them. And before I, the summer was over, I had about like maybe 15 geckos. Wow. That I had hatched because I just, all my females, as soon as I hatched that first one, I just threw males to all my females and had about like, yeah, 15 or 20 baby geckos. And I was just selling them like literal hotcakes. And I think that's kind of what sparked maybe his interest in selling other reptiles. Like, hey, maybe there's a business in this. Yeah. Place. Yeah, it was, uh, it was that and... It was just the love of the animals. It really was. Yeah. Uh, I think you got a, a hognose snake. I thought it was so cool. I said, I'm going to get into ball python. I want to get another ball python. Yeah, but most people don't go, I like crested geckos. I'll open a store. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. That, kind of, where's the, you know. Okay, so basically we kind of. Okay, again, they've talked. They've told I, you all right, this, all right. dude. Fast forward it for those of us. Just fast forward the story and then we'll dive deep in the shallow They something they could do together as a father and son, dude. Well, I knew that. That, and it was, they both had the common interest. And it was like, let's do this and, and do it. So. I, I'm Caleb, just saying. I mean, you, you, my favorite thing about this. crested geckos, they got a lot of cool stuff about them, but you being into them for two years, mm -hmm. did you know that they used to be considered extinct? Yeah, and I actually found that out through my other friend, Ethan, who wear the gecko heads, but I found that out through him, and I was like jaw drop shocked when cool? I realized that. Because, I mean, now you can find just like regular-looking ones for... 60 to 80 bucks yeah do but you I mean, remember this when I've they went from being extinct to like it's a new thing and you can have it as a pet yeah. and there's a scientifically developed diet for it That's i've got crazy. a crested gecko well i know that <laughs> but what i'm saying is like i remember watching like no way like i did the same with rough scale pythons it was actually uh dr greek was like yeah one of my friends has something super high end i can't really tell you about it but it's a rough scale python. They're supposed to be extinct, but he's keeping them in <laughs> captivity. Now, rough scale, even rough scale pythons are like a couple hundred bucks or whatever. But those it's are like, cool looking snakes too. Oh mm -hmm. my god! Oh, well, yeah, man. but so are crested geckos. Yeah, crested cre gecko is literally like a living Pokemon. Dude, yeah, you know what definitely. I love is that they look so pokey, but yet they're so <laughs> soft. Like they're one of the <laughs> softest. They're like they're so rubbery. The fa my favorite. I mean, the eyelashes that they have is is pretty epic. But my favorite thing about them is the sticky pad on the tail. Oh yeah, yeah. like okay, they have gecko toes on their tail and that. a little monkey. Yeah. Here's my question about this. I've never gotten any kind of definitive answer. I'm not expecting from any of you guys, but I just want to put it out there one more time. I mean, we wouldn't know. The <laughs> sticky pad on the tail. They lose their tail and they don't get it back. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they probably use their tail more than lots, more than most other lizards who grow their tail back. Right. And I'm like, why? Cool. Like, what kind of cruel joke is this on this poor crested geckos? It actually has a pad, just like his toes, to hold on to stuff because it <laughs> uses it to climb. But if it loses it, it's gone for the rest of their life. This is not cool for me. Like, I, I don't know. Like, a blue belly, like, maybe use its tail for a little bit of balance and obviously to escape and get away. But why does it get so it. many more chances after that? It doesn't hardly use its tail at all compared to a crested gecko. Mm -hmm. And so many other lizards grow their tail back, but not a crested gecko. I don't understand this. I, I can help you with that. Please. All right. So, like, on the surface, they're all Pokemon and cute with the monkey tail and the super useful stuff and all that stuff. But then they lose their tail and, like, look at me. I'm fucking badass. I use my get-out-of-jail card. <laughs> and you know what I mean? And now I'm like a freaking gibbon in the trees <laughs> running through. I don't need my tail. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh, you thought I needed that? Guess what? <laughs> Throw you. Throw it. <laughs> and I, I was right-handed anyway. <laughs> Take my left hand. I'm going to do twice as much in you in life anyhow. Yeah. Right. And guess what? I'm taking the reptile industry by storm. <laughs> Get out of the way, leopard geckos. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but I like that answer the best so far. No. 
So oh, thanks. That's my answer. That's a good one. I like You're it. You're welcome. That, that's, I mean, I'm going to establish that one in my brain as fact until somebody convinces me well, otherwise. You can be less frustrated now anyway. I, I appreciate it. No, I'm, I'm very much less frustrated. I was super frustrated about that, honestly. I was like, why? Why, 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 why? I've asked so many people, and nobody's giving me a good answer. Thank you. I, I, <laughs> You're welcome. Are you guys ready to dive deep in the shallow end? Oh, of course. This sure. is a ridiculous segment where usually I think of a ridiculous question, but I do like to get help because... It's much more interesting bringing other people's perspective in. And you went live, Bill, on your CMB Reptiles Instagram, and we asked this question. And Brian's favorite question that people were throwing out, there's about 84 <laughs> questions about food, which just make me hungry. But the one that you liked best was what? Andy Gabs threw out, does size matter? Okay, so that's the question. We'll put it to you guys first. I want you to take this question... Super shallow As though question. you are super shallow. <laughs> no, no, no. Like really, I mean, the question is by nature very shallow. Yes. But I want you guys to understand. I, I want you to answer this question, like I'm like I, you know, I'm struggling with this, Bill, and I'm coming to you, Kayla, as my friend, because I'm about to lose it because I don't understand the answer to this question. Please help me. <laughs> Does size, size really matter? matter? Do you want to start first? <laughs> <laughs> Take it wherever you want. But I need your help desperately. I think if we're being honest and wholehearted. Yes, please. I really don't think so. I mean, you can have as much fun on a Nintendo Game Boy as you would on the giant switch okay like fun and excitement doesn't come from big things some of some does but i mean the real root of everything you're saying it's a cheap thrill possibly okay maybe going there maybe maybe big things are a cheap thrill cuz i find myself keeping small things i never really keep big things, things that take up a lot of room. I have like, I still have my tiny little Game Boy from when I, whenever it came out, 06, 05, whenever. Game Boy came out in like 86. The, the little, the Game Boy Advance, <laughs> so. the little flip one. 88? The little flip square I, one, I had that. Game Boy? Game? Like 88, 89. Yeah, so? I think I so. I mean, I got my first Nintendo in like 88, 89. Oh, maybe right. I don't know. I, don't we'll, know. I had to read we'll 100 check. books that summer because it cost $100. Anyway. I okay. think it does matter with trucks. <laughs> <laughs> why why do you mean, say that? Because the bigger truck can, has this. more towing capacity. It's You can do more with it. You can put more people in it. If you have a small truck, you can't do as much. They're both trucks, but yet the bigger one, you can do a lot more with, have a lot more fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. That's I can't deny the truth of that. That's pretty valid. Yeah, yeah like, I can valid. see if, like if you want a sports car, you kind of want it to be small. You got that power yeah. to weight ratio. But if yeah, if you want a truck, mm-hmm. I don't. Well, know, actually, I don't size know how, matters in both regards. Right? I don't know how deep uh, a big truck is as far as like a subject matter, but you know, <laughs> you could get in deeper mud for sure. A big well, truck. The, the, <laughs> real, the real question for me is like all those guys driving around in really big trucks. Are they compensating for size, lack of size somewhere else? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of... Ryan, what do you that's think? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah so give me your take. Oh, well, the pinky toe. <laughs> it's there, right? It's the smallest toe. Constantly stubbed on things. Constantly stubbed on things. Like, slamming into corners, and it's almost like seems like it's magnetically slammed into <laughs> everything that you just... <laughs> can't imagine why it possibly You're hit that. You're welcome, whoever said that on the live stream. And then you start wondering, why do I even have this thing? Like, <laughs> it doesn't amputate. even attribute to balance. Like, you're basically doing most of your balancing on your foot with your big toe. And, so, and the pinky Testing it. is probably, if we had to guess, the next thing to go in human evolution, like, is going to be the pinky toe. Mm. If we're, we don't, what do you use it for other than stubbing on your stuff? 
and causing yourself pain and horror. I mean, today, maybe back, you know, we're slowly evolving away from being able to actually grip things with our toes, which I can do pretty well because I'm Filipino. I pick things up with my toes all the time. But the pinky's never involved in that. Wait, why is that ever. a race thing? <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm just wanting to bring race into it. <laughs> <laughs> and Have you ever seen a Filipino pinky toe? <laughs> mine is pretty short. It's great. Oh, I thought you were going to say, they're very superior to other races. Pinky no, toes. My, my, middle, my middle toe might be superior to every other toe on my foot. However, the pinky toe only causes me pain and sorrow. And it's never done anything else. Even the nail on it, like I have to just wear it, like grows out to the side and I have to trim off this extra piece that becomes sharp and tries to split away from the rest of it anyway. I don't, so it's almost like my toenail is trying to split away from my toenail on my pinky toe because it's like, we're out. Like this thing needs to we're fall done. off. And <laughs> not be used anymore. It's because it's so small. That's why it's the smallest too. So mm-hmm. the size of the pinky toe is a big factor in why. Because the big toe, like I said, does all the work. Big toe's like, I'm here. <laughs> is this I'm gonna, how you're I'm making this you now up. a size matters question? The big toe versus pinky toe? Yeah, well, I just thought it was it okay. was like the next subject that came in right after size matters. And I was like, sure. yeah, pinky toe, size. That was a good one too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah it See, totally I, could, I could evolve away from my pinky toe on this side because it kind of like stays stuck to the next toe. But this side, my pinky toe can swing way out and grab. Toe. <laughs> I mean, look at that. That's like a monkey grabbing toe. This side is like kind of connected. Yeah, and so, make sure you guys wipe like this table down again before you have dinner. Because <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, that was disgusting. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, you got got to bust out the sarong and the pinky toes sometimes. On I'm, this I'm down for it. But I'm just saying, like uh, that was, you know. I'm not for some disgusting stuff, but that was that was one of the more disgusting moments of the podcast <laughs> for me. <laughs> All I could think about was, oh man, these guys eat dinner. Hey, you time. had your toe out first. Well, I did, okay, but I didn't maybe put it didn't. on the table. Okay, that's right here. We'll use some, <laughs> we'll use some buffalo. No, nah, let's use the sagamore for that. <laughs> Sterilization. <Jesus Gosh. laughs> well, I'll say this about size matters. I haven't enough experience comparing the different ones to uh, answer, so I think we need some women on this podcast mm. later. We've been talking. <laughs> we'll try to bring about this up. Having Ashley and Hillary on the podcast, like forever. We've oh, we should get Dana this. in on that. You think Dana would podcast with us? Oh yeah. We should Definitely. just exclude ourselves and give it over to the ladies. That sounds a bit extreme. Gary. We need to have know. Ashley. Yeah, you don't think they could do it? Sexist pig. It's Ashley, not, no, it's Hillary, not about whether or not Dana, they can. It's and whether whatever guest they want. They want. It's not about whether or not they can. Don't try to. Like that. It's like it's whether or not do I want them to. I know they can. Is I that what I want? I, I kind of want them to. Yeah. That would be fun. That would be a fun. All right. Uh, All right. This is definitely. We episode. need to. We need to know by a vote. Do you guys want us to have them on as guests, or do you want them to take over the podcast for an entire episode? Here's the oh. deal. You don't get to vote on women's rights unless you go to Search Ebola's Reptiles Facebook group <laughs> and tell us there. Yep. If we should do an all women, Garrett and Brian have to sit this one out. It's not because we've been talking about having our wives on the podcast with us, mm-hmm. which. Also is a good, I mean, we could do both, you know what I mean? But do you want the guys to move out of the way and let the ladies actually take over? I think it would be cool to get Ash, Hillary, Dana together. I mean, this is kind of like theoretical fantasy land because our, I don't yeah, know if our Garrett's wives are Yeah, having three-way fantasies with our wives right now, guys. How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> and then invite, like, let them invite a guest. I think you know be, what I mean. I think that would be really cool. Dude, are you insane? Well, yeah. two of the three will be want. in Pittsburgh. What's that? When we come out to Pittsburgh, so again. we just got to get Hillary out there. Yeah. You're saying you yeah. want to get? If Hillary's going to leave the state, she's going to Hawaii first of all. <laughs> okay, so all, want them location to take over the sponsors in Hawaii. More. Okay, I'm just going to shut up before I get myself in deep shit. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why this podcast would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That would be good. Maybe we should get Leisha, Clint's wife. That would be fun. Oh, man. That would be fun. <laughs> that would. She's pretty nice, though. Yeah. Like, yeah, but know, she has pretty strong she's... opinions about me drinking my pee. Good. Okay. <laughs> we'll have her on. <laughs> yeah. I just want some strong Dana opinions. Maybe not strong opinions, but That's she, all... she was concerned for my mental health. That's all, all I need are strong opinions about your mental health. And I know my <laughs> wife has some. My kids definitely do. They still think you're an eight-year-old trapped in an adult's body. And you know what? Healthy as hell for it. I'm telling you what. <laughs> I, my, my worries are as follows. I want to have fun. I want everybody to enjoy themselves. And then if that's not happening, then I start to worry about stuff. But if it is happening, I'm like, all right, we're solid. Let's go. You know, you know what's pretty funny is that all of us have, I think all of our wives, 
you're getting there. Yep. But like all, all of our wives have a lot of similarities in the fact that they are like, they're, they're all amazing women. They're super capable, very smart, very uh, supportive. You know what I mean? But also completely unintimidated about reining us in where we need it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> between, That's for between sure. Between us three. How, how did you, you and Dana get involved? How'd you find a, cause obviously that's the perfect wife or I wouldn't have picked mine. Right. So how'd you find yours? Computer class in high school when I was a senior and she was a junior. And we've no been, way. We've been you guys together. are high school sweethearts. Yeah. We just had our 25th wedding anniversary. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah. How old were you guys when you got married? Um, 22, 21, something like that. 21 wow. and 22. Yeah. Dang. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty legit. Yeah, so, I mean, you guys are solid. I mean, Super solid. And we waited to have kids. We didn't have Caleb for about six years. Yeah. How was that? Was that, is that something, is that a path you would recommend? Because me and Ashley were pregnant like two months after. I would also married. recommend that. I wasn't, we didn't go six years married, but we were together for a few years and then we were married for at least a year or so before we started having kids. And I mean, I can recommend that 100%. Yeah. Like it was great to have that time. I love my kids more than anything on the on the planet. I didn't know what love was until I had kids. In my opinion, like kind of, you know, like well, I thought I knew what love was. And then I had kids. I was like, ooh, this is like some crazy <laughs> shit. This oh. is a step up. <laughs> yeah, but that time with her, and you know, I'm assuming you'll agree with me on this. That the time that I had with Hillary without kids is pretty cherishable times. Yeah, we, Ashley yeah. and I had that because we dated a while. Right. But right. once we were married, then we're like, let's get this party started. So, but what about you guys? Is that something? That no, we know? weren't ready for kids. We wanted to get married young. We did. And, uh, you know, still works. So, yeah. but, um, what'd you we, guys do for six years? That's we, my question. We just, we went to the bars. We went to Chicago. We went to the party scenes. We, um, I, I just gotten out of college. Um, I was starting my new career, um, so we were party animals and we're doing what 20 year olds were supposed to do. We just happened to be married. And, um, so, you know, after about six years of that, it's got kind of boring. Let's have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> we need Caleb to shake things up a bit. Yeah. Right That's here. commendable, man. I like that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, That's no. awesome. Well, we just, then they yeah. must have got you must have been bored of us when you started going to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> what's your what's your plan here for the future, young sir? Honestly, not married yet. No, not but yet. But you and your girlfriend have been together for four years. And how old are you now? Twenty one. Oh okay. shit. Yeah. Okay, so you're so like it's, it's right around so the corner. He's, he's the age you were when you got married. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you be surprised if he got married like right now? Are you I doubt ready for would. that? Would you guys like? I don't think he'd be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, no. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I'd support. Uh, yeah, I'd support it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I would support well, four it. Four years. As long as it doesn't that's... detract from your duties at the shop, sir. She she just comes down and grabs a basilisk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she comes down to the shop. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, honestly, that's what I think is married and starting our own lives. Is that something that you guys are working towards? Yeah. That we've been trying to do that for past two years now. Okay. But yeah, it's been great. It's been so much fun. Now, are you guys technically engaged? Are you like, I don't know. Is she gonna listen to this podcast? Yeah, dude. I was days. like, what the hell, man? It's like, oh, when are you having kids? No, no, no. no. <laughs> she might. Listen. I just want to know the strategy. I mean, basically, we're we're pretty committed to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Just engaging it would just solidify it. 100%. So, what is your philosophy on like okay when is the right time or how should we do this because i went in with no strategy on this and and it was painful uh, <laughs> i, I want to know do you have a plan four years you've been thinking about it obviously you guys yeah are serious. i think the plan is i don't know i feel like i'll just know it'll kind of be an intuition thing i kind of feel like that's when so you're going we'll for like a kinda, feeling like an yeah. emotion like you know what i'm gonna today's the day i'm yeah. gonna do it definitely that's how i feel about it just kind of let myself and her kind of feel it out and then see if obviously she wants to get married she always talks about getting married but i think it's just a matter of obviously my i mean look at this guy and <laughs> ultimately size matters well, so she, who she's wouldn't a, <laughs> she's always talking <laughs> she's always talking about it her and her mom so i mean okay all right it's just is she me. gonna listen to this podcast do you think did she listen to the last one uh she watched the last one yeah the so whole she's thing gonna listen and watch your facial expressions as you've pull out all these well I, i'm gonna probably just not ask it. just ask it are you sure yeah okay so like do you have a ring 
are you to that point? No, I don't have a ring yet, but okay. yeah, that's, yeah, that's, dude, that's definitely in the future. You watching this podcast. No, I'm just trying <laughs> to ask you with Well, he bro. said to ask <laughs> it. Yeah, I told him I to ask it. Yeah, I wasn't going to ask, ask it. it. I know. Okay, fair enough. I'm not trying to <laughs> well, pressure you. No. I think you she's amazing. Yeah. This, guy's, this guy is freaking on top of his head, dude. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. No kidding. <laughs> but that's why I'm asking, because I wasn't. Yeah. Once that time comes around, then I'll once that feeling I start to get, that's when I think I'm going to get the ring. Once okay. the feeling comes around. Okay. But yeah, we're definitely going to get married. Yeah. That was my high school sweetheart. I dated her my whole junior, uh, senior year of high school. That's going to make me fucking cry, dude. That's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that one time when I almost cried and you're like, this is weird. I'm fine. And you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Katie is when she got to the end of the uh, the final Lord of the Rings, and I, was, and I was like, I was like, how are you not crying yet? I was like, <laughs> I just love Gollum so much, and now he's in the lava. I read. I no, read when books. Frodo leaves, my when dad Frodo leaves on the boat oh, with Gandalf. Yeah. I was like, how are you not you crying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My dad, my dad got me all the books when I was eighteen. He got me the books. He's like, you read these, and I was like, okay, and that, oh, awesome, awesome little world of. Uh, adventure in what an amazing author yeah uh, my favorite series i read that series twice in college twice yeah me and too that's what i got it. I, was, I was 18 my dad got me the books and i read them yeah. yeah but the movies were incredibly accurate to the books that's exactly yes exactly what i was it thinking was of like what i've always I, thought this is how i envisioned it that's exactly better. what i did too yeah. <laughs> i was blown away i was i, I Dude, was you know what was the, okay the scene for me what yeah. happened is just weird that you happen to have a big white horse behind your head while I'm re- realizing this, but the scene for me that made it when I was like, I mean, it was already good. Like, don't get me wrong. Everything along was like, this is fantastic the book and the movie. Okay. What I imagined in my head when I was reading in the book, when, when she's crossing the river and the night riders and the black riders are following her, trying to follow her across the river, mm-hmm. when she's trying to get back to the elephant kingdom and she calls upon the water and the horses come charging through the water in the river to wash mm-hmm. away the, um, the ring rates and the, you know, the old Kings before, uh, in that moment when it's when the was coming and there's that moment in the movie and she's like she's gonna cross it's like how are they gonna pull this off like how are they gonna make this like what i imagined in my head like i see the scene coming they're chasing her she's crossing the river i was like and then those horses come crashing down to the water made a what like it was amazing i was like oh this is exactly what i saw in my head when i was reading the book okay okay hold on i gotta i gotta double down on this because now I want to know. Obviously, you guys, you read the book. You didn't read the books. So you not the, not the I haven't. Read I read the, the Hobbit. I didn't read the, all the Lord of the Rings. Me names. too. Okay. Oh, so it's one, sorry, sorry. The thing that was not there that was, was in the book. Yeah, that was in the book. Oh, I, look, I've already forgot his name because how much the movies have I've seen more than the book is so old. Oh my god, I forgot his name. But Bum, Bombadil, Tom, Tom Bombadil. Bombadil, Tom Bombadil was not in the movie. What the fuck? I don't care about him at all because I didn't read the books. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Bombadil Ignorance was a bliss. crucial, crucial character in the movie. Maybe not to some opinions, obviously, since he got cut. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he got cut from the film. Which is complete and utter bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, like, so from a, from a psychology standpoint, uh, what, Caleb, what was, your, like, what was the best part of Lord of the Rings for you? My favorite part is, man. I suppose a, you could include, include The Hobbit if you wanted yeah. to as well. Eh, I didn't really like The Hobbit movie, really. The, no, I the didn't one that they made into a the three-part series? Yeah, that was a little no, that was, yeah. But, it, but anyway, <laughs> best, best moment in any of them for you? I think the best moment would have to be when Gandalf returns mm. resurrected as, as Gandalf the White. Because, I mean... In the movie, you know, it's so sad. He dies with this, with the Balrog, the giant fiery dragon, mm. and then and the he comes movie, back and he's being like, an absolute badass. Yeah, he's, freaking he comes <laughs> back like God with this huge white beam behind him, white hair, white robe, white horse. He comes oh, yeah, back like dude. a literal spirit, and that was that was like the coolest part of the movie for me. That or when uh, either that or the um, Mines of Moria oh. fight scene. With the giant cave troll. Well, that was that was right where that was when just they were coming because out it was a cool right action scene. Right, mines, right yeah. when, when Gandalf went down with the ball. Yeah. yeah, just because the cool, just because the cool action scene. Or yeah, what? That, that's my favorite okay. fight scene. But my literal favorite feeling from is the, the movie is when Gandalf comes. How about back. you? Best, Which was also best, kind of an epic fight scene, yeah. Yeah. falling no, through the sky really down. To the, yeah, that was epic. Yeah. Um, gosh, that is so hard because the whole thing is a. 
Yeah, but you have to pick one. Okay, the one that comes to mind <laughs> is a sad one. It's when Gandalf says, you shall not pass, and he stabs the staff into the rock, and the Balrog drags him down at that moment. It's just... All right, dude. Fucking... So Ron just handed me his phone, a little in fact on why was Tom Bivell though not in Lord of the Rings. And right here it says, <laughs> Bombadil is absent from Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings trilogy. Jackson explained that this was because he and the co-writers felt that the character does little character does little to advance the story. <laughs> and including him would make the film unnecessarily long. And that is what's wrong with modern society <laughs> Which today, Which is funny, folks. because that is the longest movies yeah, ever. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> what's Tom Bombadil going to add? Yeah, Another right, 20 right. minutes? I mean. yep. <laughs> probably, probably a little less. Well, you know, I've, Tom probably slowed down a lot for The Hobbit. Even though it was like maybe 15 minutes in reality, yeah, maybe it seemed like an eternity in the moments. But that's kind of the, one of the great things about life. And, and when you get lost in that moment when it's like, it could have been 15 minutes, but it it could have been a lifetime, yeah. And it was a, it was that amazing of a fifteen minutes. It was like damn, that that was like a lifetime of mm-hmm. amazing activity. And it, you don't know what happened in fifteen minutes, maybe. But <coughs> okay, hold on. I want to get at something because I don't know when this turned into a Lord of the Rings podcast. But <laughs> Bill, what was your favorite scene? Can you run that by us again one more time? Sorry, the, no, the, okay. off. I didn't mean to. When I think about the movie, I think about when the Balrog takes Gandalf down. And the, the sorrow, and that you've followed him this long, and he's in charge of everything, and they lose their leader. It's oh, just that's a different perspective it, yeah. than I have on that. Scene. That's, yeah. that's Which the is the, what leads up to and sets up your moment that is your favorite. That's the end. Yeah. Of, no, he's just, oh, Gandalf's gone, and then it comes back. And it's the interesting next part that and both of you in. guys have around saying, okay. And the end, it, it ties in with, like, I mean, you're thinking about getting married, as we all know, thanks to Garrett. And like you'd be basically following your father's footsteps, like it kind of leads into that thing too. Yep. Like you guys are definitely uh, you've been set up with. It's a pretty awesome thing you've been set up with here, as far as like uh, like the family aspect, like a solid, a yeah, solid really family has been. unit. Like Thank that's you. a big another important Very part. Thankful as, for that. as equally as Tom Bombadil was important in the uh, <laughs> big message of Lord <laughs> of the Rings and what is important in life, uh, you're instilling that. As well, like the family, the family thing there is just as important as Tom Bombadil. This is what's funny. Me. Okay, so I think a lot of people have. There's some of the people that are listening to this right now. Probably most of us. If I don't know if I want to categorize reptile people, are like, yay, they're talking about L O T R, you know. <laughs> and the other half are like stupid fantasy stuff. I hate <laughs> fantasy stuff. But this is what's funny is that so fantasy is always like you have to you have to have that uh suspension of disbelief right you have to set aside like okay obviously this is not real yeah and then you can get into characters emotion and meaning and just kind of connect with a deeper part of yourself which mm-hmm. you can do in realistic movies too but it's interesting to me because that movie the uh, movie series of movies is goes through so much that it pretty much covers everything anywhere Okay, so nobody mentioned anything about love or romance or anything like that. It's not at this table. You know, what What I see is Brian's favorite part is how there was a helplessness of everything coming down on you and the universe stepped in and saved you in a seemingly impossible, miraculous way. Like you're waiting for this miracle from the universe, right? And then Caleb is over here saying, I just want a happy ending. I don't want Gandalf to die. He's my guy. And then when he comes back, it's like, yes, triumphant resurrection, (laughs) like better than ever. You know what I mean? And now the death is justified because the, the, the end comes out even better than that. And for you, your favorite part was actually the connection, Bill, with the sorrow and the loss. Yeah, and you know what's funny is when Gandalf dies. When I like that part of the movie, I mean that's a huge part of the movie, probably one of the bigger part of the parts of the whole series. But the part I saw was like, "F yeah, Gandalf self sacrifice he, he himself to save." Everybody. And you're like, "Man, the sorrow of losing your leader." You know what I mean? Like we all need a leader in life, right? And that's the part you got out of the same part of the movie. Do you want to know what my favorite part of the Lord of the Rings is? Of course. I'm pretty interested about that. I was disappointed in the movies because, now I never read the books, but I did watch, I think it was like in the 1970s or 80s, like the rotoscope animated version of mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings. Has anyone seen this? Yeah. We've oh, got them. Okay. I've, right. I've only Probably seen the, the Hobbit. Animated. No, Lord of the Rings, buddy. It was and all- Return of the King. They did the, re- the, the guy who did the Hobbit. 
uh, animation yep. came and finished the so it's two styles and 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 rotoscope the the rotoscope particularly is pretty raw because basically what they do is they film it live action and they animate over it so what happens with animation my dad is an animator if if you're animating from scratch and it's a cartoon you know, you get these people that are like elastic and silly and stuff like that. But when you rotoscope and you're drawing on fantastical characters on top of live action, it's rooted in reality and it gives it a visceral, dirty, raw, filthy Dude, look. I just, how have I not seen this? I don't know. You should go watch it. But my favorite part of the Lord of the Rings is the death of, is it Boromir? Yeah, He's the Forrest? first brother to die. He yeah. gets shot up by arrows with yep. orcs. Yeah, right after he tries okay. to steal the ring. You ready for this? This is what I like. All right. So it was way better in the animated rotoscope version. In the movies, the scene is there, and it was good, whatever, but it, it kind of like pulled its punch, right? Because this is what's awesome. When you watch orcs, like I couldn't show my kids the Lord of the Rings movie because they would have nightmares about the orcs. <laughs> yeah. They are scary monsters of nightmare Definitely. that like eat the hearts of their enemies, right? What is so cool about Lord of the Rings is you have like orcs and elves and the elves are like these super mortal, whatever, awesome, you know, creatures and all this stuff. And you're like, where do men, mortal men, fit into this picture of worlds full of dragons and wizards and all this crazy stuff. And Boromir shows the strength of men more so than the return of the king or any of that kind of, cause there's like the, the ranger help me. What's his name? Strider Aragon. Yeah. Aragon. Aragon. Yeah. He was the yeah. one where I would more to show the strength oh, of men. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, kind of sure. They tried to write it in there, but Boromir did it better, especially in the rotoscope version. And this is why, I mean, he did do it. But the scene was best because oh. they have, it's the first time you see the Oroquai, which are like super orcs, extra scary and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff, right? And the Oroquai ultimately kills him. And the orcs are like these basically demonic figures that are running in there, things that were, the, the things that go bump in the night, right? And Boromir is flawed. He screws up big time in a way that's like, oh, you freaking traitor. Not only did you fall to the, the thing that you knew you would fall to, the temptation that every man before you has fell into that they want to take the ring for themselves, right? But you betrayed your friend, your mission, everything to do it. So he's flawed. And then he's like, holy shit, I just effed this one up big time. And what does he do? He pays for it with his life. And, and, but this is the part that really gets me. He's disgusting. He's the bad guy in that moment, but he's a good dude, but he was the bad guy of the moment, but he redeems himself in giving his life for his friend, this small, helpless hobbit creature. And, and this is where I'm like, yeah, kingdom of men, because he stands up against the scary, nasty things that go bump in the night. They shoot him full of arrows. He's got nothing left. Right? And, and he's like, and it's hopeless, but he dies anyway. And he stands up and it's like, <laughs> arrows filling his body. And he's like, ooh, and he's dying and he's bleeding out. And the orcs crowd in and he stands up, especially in the animated movies. And he stands up one more time and he's like, <laughs> and everyone's like, <laughs> you know what I'm like? Freaking men, dude, they're so unpredictable. You think you got them down and they stand up and kill three more of you. <laughs> and, like, fah, fah, fah. and then finally this Oroquai guy comes in and kills him, and, but he still never backs down. You know what I mean? And it's like, yes, you can be a wizard and powerful or a dragon and giant reptile that burns cities, but men are the ones that strike fear in the hearts of monsters when they want to because you cannot stop the spirit of humanity no matter what you do. They're on their deathbed and they're like, fuck you! <laughs> and I'm like, yeah! 
you know what I mean? And you're right. Aragon does that through the whole movie. But he has like one moment. And the reason why it's good is because Aragon is like perfect, pretty boy that everyone yeah. was in love with the whole time. He was a scumbag, but he still had it in him. And if you're listening to this podcast right now, I don't care how down on yourself you are. You have that heroic spirit in you if you can stand up and tap into it and say, fuck that, I'm this, and you can't stop me. Yep. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, baby. <laughs> Come on. And the audience forgets and I, him. And I love that every single person has this different thing where we're tapping in to, you know, like you want leaders. You want you know, like the redemption, happiness, a good ending, and you it's want to rely. No, that, on the, on that was the just my moment. Universe where it made the wall. That was just the moment that made the book tie in where I was imagining in the movie. Well, I know, but that totally falls in line with what you do. You're like, I submit to the universe. There's got to be something good out there that's taking care of me. Oh yeah, sure. and I want to stand up and say, "Fuck that! This is different now. Captive bread only, bitches." <laughs> Boom. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care if nobody else does that. That's what's right. I screwed it up before, but I'm going to stand up and be a fucking man now, and you can't stop me. Yes! I, I don't know. Sorry, I'm getting a little fired up. Somebody yeah, else talking. Dude, that was <laughs> Lord, no, I just of, like the depth of it as I watch you guys else talk. talk. Hold on, I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> you talk. Classic Hartle. <laughs> no, it was... <laughs> No, that was uh, that was very that was epic. I, I think I didn't realize that Lord of the Rings was gonna be the thing that got to drop the most f bombs ever in his life on any kind You're of. You're welcome. Yeah, I don't. Incredible. I just but I use them when no, I need. Oh yeah, to. Lord. I mean, it is. It's a story that like it's the struggle of humanity is the big story of that story, and like we are going through a lot of that stuff right now, and it all ties in with what's happening today. The evil of the ring exists today. People are turned by it constantly. And we're fighting against it all the time. It's a perfect mm. metaphor for the time we've been living in for quite a bit now. And it's just yeah. like, and it just really ties in every emotion that surrounds it the evil side, the good side, the struggles of trying to remain on the good side and not the evil side. And so I am 100% resonating with like how passionate you got about it because it actually ties in with what is actually happening right now in our existence, as much as the fantasy side of it is. Since the beginning that. of time. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So Enough said. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's just like, yeah. Okay. What else can we talk about? <laughs> how do we? How do we? How do we get that ring in the fire? How do we burn that ring and oh, man. destroy it and we, get it out to where we are no longer being coerced or ruled by whatsoever? And small things like deciding to go from what has been a traditional thing for a reptile store up until this point. You know, it, it may seem small in the eyes of something as grand as defeating all evil in the world of men and the universe and existence is something like that small step to be like, well, we're not going to, it's small, but it's still, it, it's, I, I'm answering my own question right now. And it's those small things that you do to make the world a better place for everybody, everything and every possible, everything, everybody and everything around you. Well, well, you got to answer your question. You have to define what is the evil ring of power in your life. It kind of, you're pull, tying it into like, the idea of disposable reptiles as pets and that's what and, I just and into, honoring yes. life. Yeah. But, but I think you can, I think you can take that f through, you know, like whatever, like, I don't know. You, you have to define the ring before you can say, how can we defeat this in our lives? Like, what is, what is your Caleb? What is your ring as far as like, what is your biggest, I guess, fear or temptation or thing that's going to hold you down from ultimately realizing your full potential in life? What is, what is your personal one? My personal one is flying. Really? Yep. You're, you have a fear of flying? Yeah. I didn't know Always. that. You've been to Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to Pittsburgh. Plane. Yeah. I, I'll do it. It's just like, that's what, I don't know. That's what always holds me back. Like I'd love to go to Europe, but what the mm -hmm. hell am I going to do on a, 18 hour flight and can barely make a five hour one. Is Dana well, the afraid ring, of the flying? Ring is more than you said. The ring is not no. just a fear okay. though. The ring is not something that just. No, no, just, no, no. It's like, no. It, yeah. But yeah, like, I feel like that's the only thing that's really holding me back. It's not like a. 
And the ring is, is not, I mean, I don't feel like, you, I feel like you asked, like, what his fear is, almost, in the, which is not what the ring is. The ring is the ring is the thing that tempts you and destroys you because it tempts you, like, this is how you can get where you want to be mm-hmm. Okay, now. yeah, that's fair. And, so it's not what's destroy your, you ultimately. Yeah. So, but, but I suppose it could still be flying if you were like, hey, my greatest dream is this, but there's this thing that. Well, he flew to Pittsburgh. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, ask, you ask him the question the way you <laughs> that, want to answer. That, that's what, it's the thing that temp, he did say, mention temptation, but it, it kind of got turned into what is your fear? Um, the ring, as I just explained, is this thing that tempts you because of its ability to bring everything you need or want in life. It's like, this is what will end all of my sorrows and create everything that I want and need right now in my life. If I just grab this ring, it'll take me there. But it ultimately destroys you, which is the part that you maybe don't think about when you're reaching for the ring. Like, that, that's not in my brain right now. I'm grabbing for the ring. But this is so it's a shortcut. You. Shortcut. To your dreams, except it actually... Destroys you. Okay. I guess the only thing then would be self-doubt. Ooh. Now you're getting somewhere. Yeah. I think that's the only thing that would really end up holding me back. Because, like, we talked about with flying, I still flew to Pittsburgh. Like, yeah. It didn't hold. Like, I, yeah, Done. I didn't say, no, I'm not coming because I don't like flying. You made that plane your bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like, yeah, I feel like that's what it is for me. It's just self-doubt because if you doubt yourself, you're eventually not going to be able to grow. And I think... Yeah, there's always reasons to doubt yourself, but there's a hundred other reasons to not doubt yourself. What's the one that you hang on to when you find yourself struggling with self-doubt? How do you get Mine? out of that? For our listeners, in case yeah. someone... Because um, someone's so relating like, to that I'm, data. When I'm really doubting myself, I just... I know people say to like never live on the past or anything, but things that you've done that, are, that you feel are successful mm. and that you can still do today or tomorrow even doesn't have to be today but anything that you feel that makes you happy and you felt was a win personally I think that's that's what always gets me out of self-doubt it's like oh I did that I can do that times 10 if I tried hmm. so you're saying where people say don't dwell in the past you're saying selectively dwell in the past yeah so like learn from your failures but cling mm-hmm. to your successes and say mm-hmm. hey I know I'm at least that good Mm-hmm. So I actually had the super shallow version of this, but just to kind of bring what you're saying to reality, I had a policy of never dating anyone that was less than the previous, like my previous top best girl I ever dated. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, I know I'm at least worth that. <laughs> right. So I got to find, I can do better than that. I, you know, like, like what are the odds that that was the best I'm ever going to get? Pretty slim until finally I broke up with someone. My dad was like, hey, buddy, that's the best you're ever going to get. And that was Ashley. I was like, oh, crap. And I ran back and asked her to marry (laughs) me. I literally broke up with her and then two weeks later asked her to marry me. But that's a story for another time. (laughs) So that's that's your advice to people Mm -hmm. listening. Like, remember your successes and try to one up it. Yep. Just remember what made you feel it doesn't even have to be successful. It can just be happy. Whatever made you feel happy as a person. Just do I love it again. It. How, how old are you again? 21. Jeez, man. All right. That's some wisdom. What about you, Bill? What's your ring? I think my ring is probably... Hmm. Man, I've been, I knew you were going to ask me this. <laughs> you had time. I they had time. For um, you. Uh, the one thing that could hold me back... I've, I've shed most of it. Good. Oh, thank I God to know that you can get to that point. What was it? You already melted it in the lava. I guess a little bit of excess. Excess? Yeah. Like wealth? Material? No, uh, just, just having a lot of everything uh, in an excessive way, um, in a way, can't hold somebody back. Wait, 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 wait. Back up. Explain this to me because so many people are still trying to achieve more, like, access in their life. Like, that's what's going to bring us happiness. So what are you talking about? You had it and you shed it? Go, explain that to me. I'm confused. Um, yeah. My ch- as I got older, just my desire for the things that I wanted out of life started to change. And no longer did I – the things that were important to me before were, were – 
I sorry, I don't I'm not want to interrupt, but you keep saying the things, and I don't know what these things are. What did you want before, and what do you want now? Before I wanted wealth, um, material things, um, alcohol, partying, things of this sort, um, anything in excess. I didn't have one reptile. I bought a hundred. I mean, everything I did was just so extreme Hmm. that I had to learn how to let that go. And I think it just happened with age, um, just kind of naturally shedding that and, and, you know, finding myself in situations that weren't the best for me and realizing that I just am overdoing things. So, so it's not age, it's, but, but like maybe like a slow learned lesson where you got what you wanted, you got what you wanted, you got what you wanted, and you still weren't happy. Right. And you had to look for something else. Mm-hmm. What's the something else? Because help me get there. I want to learn from your mistakes. Um, what, what do you value most in life right now? I mean, your moment from Lord of the Rings was that they lost their leader. Mm-hmm. Why did that resonate with you? It, it's... It, it, it was the most memorable moment for me. Yeah. So but, but what, is, what is your greatest, like, if I could give you one thing now and say, Bill, you got it. It's the thing. What, what's that thing? Running a reptile store. That's what? my most important thing. That's... And what, what is it that the reptile store gives you? I love to take care of the animals. I love to knowing that I'm doing the the best I can to keep these guys happy and alive. And that to me is more important than a fancy car, fancy shoes, um, having a, having a lot of everything. Uh, That's pretty cool. I hope we can give you the platform to see that because I think a lot of people, I mean, obviously we're searchable as reptiles. So I think a lot of people that listen to this podcast are involved in reptiles in one way or another. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, like, <laughs> Gandalf dying is subpar husbandry or making bad decisions that impact the little reptiles' lives, right? So you're Wild saying, caught. Yeah, that, you're right. Yeah, it falls right in line with it. So you're trying to do better by the little guys. They rely on you. Yeah, it's... I don't know, just the the... Wanting to attain more and more and more and more and more, never being satisfied, never looking at yourself saying, this is good, I'm happy. Not to be complacent, not to not stay on top of your game or not to lose your hustle, but it can be a detriment. Got to take time to smell the roses type of a deal. And the roses are the reptiles in our case. Brian, what's your ring? Dude, it's... Money, the stuff you're talking about, excess wealth. But it's not my ring. It's the ring that I see that's out there. That's, that's the ring. I, without sounding too self-righteous or whatever, or indignant or whatever the hell negative thing you could take from it, I've been able to realize my reality for a long time and the, the things that I really want and need in my life to live a full and what I consider successful life, a.k.a. being happy and content and enjoying my life and surroundings, I've had that for a long time. The things that I've really wanted in life have come to me a lot. And I've been through plenty of struggles, but it, and that's just part of it. But I somehow am able to just focus and see I always have, I have, I'm blessed that I, that I do have the blessing. And I lose sight of it. Don't get me wrong. Just like most people, I lose sight of it. It happens. I, lo- I, I get to a point where I'm like, but on I, a small momentary basis. A small momentary basis. And I come to my senses and I'm like, oh, hold on a second. Shit is great. How long do you come to your? How often do you come to your senses? Is that a daily thing that you have to reconnect with, or is yeah? That- and I'm always looking for a better way to do it, a mm. more efficient way to do it, with less the less outside or the less imbibing. Like you know, stuff like this is enjoyable, and sometimes it can get you to a spot where you know. When you're saying stuff like this, you mean alcohol, like yeah, some drinking or some kind of yeah, getting high can whatever. get you that. That spot sometimes. Money on the table, whatever. Yeah, the money on the table. Actually, that's so I see that as sex, like, drugs, power. What is it? SMP, right? Sex, money, and power is the three temptations. Yeah, but those of aren't man. the things. That, those aren't the things that make me happy, though. What I makes mean, you happy? Just a feeling of peace. 
and and feeling like everything is good in the world and everything's taken care of and everybody's going to be good. That's no Boromir, baby. This is what I love. He he Sandy got shot full of arrows. He's probably in a great deal of pain. But the way I see it, he's not afraid of his enemy. He's not afraid of death. He's doing what he's right. And I bet that in that two seconds of him dying, he had 100% badassery of peace, <laughs> if that even makes sense. I don't yeah, know. I understand what you're saying, 100%. Um, yeah, and I'm <clears> still looking. I'm still looking. Even, as much as I've felt like in my own personal life, I've been blessed to recognize what the ring is and not let it drag me in. I've been drugged. Don't get me wrong. I've been drugged and I've been drugged down to the depths of the depths because of the ring. It's taken me down to the bottom of where I thought I was. I'm gonna... sorry. I just love that this is like Lord of the Rings podcast. Well, it's, but it's because it ties in. You never in. know where this shit's going to go. <laughs> yeah, but as we've, as we've established, Lord of the Rings, if, if, if you have never seen it or if you haven't understood it, more importantly, then, yeah, it, it sounds silly and it doesn't make sense. But if you tie it into the depth that it actually is trying to, it's one of the most successful stories in our time, I think, popular culture-wise, sure. that uh, yeah, ties I'm, into the yeah, actual we, struggle. of. It's very popular. You could... I think you can move past that and get back to anyway, your point. Anyway, that's you. You brought up the Lord. No, I just, I just wanted to be silly for a second. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, well, you threw me off my train of thought, hundred percent. So. You said you, you've been blessed to know what the ring was. Yeah, yeah. A long time ago, like when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. Well, a kid meaning younger than eighteen. Yeah. What did, what did you? When did you see it? I mean, it, it comes and it comes and goes still. Like I said, I still look for ways to achieve the 16, 14, somewhere between 14 and 16. Let's just call it 16. Okay. There wasn't a specific moment. It was just kind of. A- no, it's been an experience. Like Bill said, he's gained it with age. You know, he's learned more and more and you've learned how to like, this is what is not going to serve me. Ultimately, even though it seems like it's going to serve me now and get me to where I want to be, and this is what I want now. I want lots of things. I want lots of stuff. This is going to make me happy right now. I don't think it's stuff anymore well, that not make anymore. you happy. It's people. The stuff yes. doesn't doesn't really make you happy. Buying things it doesn't really make you happy. Having things isn't the source of happiness. It's people. Sometimes. Sometimes people piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, but I, I understand what you're saying because we've been hanging out with you guys for a couple of days and right before this podcast, I was sitting out on your back porch and I said, I only want to work with people that I like. And the yeah. reason why is because I, I, I spent a lifetime reading scriptures, so I can only take it back to this. But there's a scripture that says, as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's two things and a friction and a grinding, but like that creative uh, atmosphere that we were taking a part of makes both parties walk away better. Yep. Yes, it does. Hundred percent. I'll tell you what. I I'm 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 blown away and I'm convicted right now. To to be perfectly honest with you, because. <clears throat> you know, like, I don't know. This is why I interrupted you, because Lord of the Rings, I'm like, I don't know why that's getting into the heart of the matter for me. But you said you're blessed to know what the ring was. You knew what yours was. You're fucking 21 years old. What the hell, man? You know what it was because it came with age. I'm over here sitting in the corner like I'm MC in this conversation, not knowing what it is. I feel like I lean into Ashley, my wife, for this. And she always tells me, like, hey, I think you need to do this, and I think you need to do that, because she loves me and she cares about me. She can say it. But I, I don't know what it is. For me, I don't. So I, I will say this. I've had little rings throughout life, but I very quickly learned that I don't care about money. I don't care about like fame or recognition not really you know like I might do something for one thing or this or that or the other whatever but you know um this is this is part of why we're friends like there is something about the that I, like, I agree I don't think you actually know what 
the ring is, and that's one of the big reasons we're friends. I'm is lost because you don't live. It I'm, hasn't affected you, dude. I'm like, lost. not it hasn't affected you. I'm lost. Well, I'll tell you why. It hasn't. I'm. Pro- I, tr- I promise you, dude. Hold on. <clears throat> Take, this is like probably one of the biggest compliments I could possibly give a person, is that somehow, you seem to be unaffected by the power of the ring. Like as much as other from outside, I can see how somebody from an outside perspective that doesn't know you can be like, oh no, that guy just wants to build a big business, sell snakes, blah 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 blah. But that's not what motivates you, and I know you well enough to know that that those aren't the things that motivate you. Like those are those are like the things that happen because you're just do, you're not affected by it, dude. Well, I can you're tell just you. Not. I can tell you what that is, but I'll ask you a question. Tell me something in a minute. I'll tell you what that is. I. I wanted to, I, I did not like myself. When I was your age, I, I thought I had this weird thought in my head that I'd be dead by 21. And all you can take with, you can't take any material possessions with you when you die. All you can take is experiences. My dad used to tell me this. I had this picture in my head when I was a little kid that like, hey, when you're in heaven, the very angels, which getting back to the Lord of the Rings, the wizards and all these powerful beings, angels are like, if they exist, right? They're like pretty freaking badass, cool, eternal beings. He's like, angels are going to sit around you like kindergartners, crisscross applesauce with their, you know, their chins in their hands asking you, tell me another story from earth. What was that like to be mortal where everything counted so much? And you, as a man who lived through so much pain and filth and garbage, and they always like were sitting at the right hand of the throne of Father in Heaven. You know what I mean? They had that eternal perspective all along. Never knew what it was like to be stuck in time dealing with the bullshit that we deal with on Earth. And they're going to want to hear your stories. Because the stories from mortal man are going to top anything from all the thousands of years that they've been around and seen and stuff. Because they had this lofty perspective all along. But they never knew what it was like to be stuck there. And I was like, wow. But I don't know what it was. I just, I, I didn't like myself as a young child. And I thought I'd be dead by 21. And when I broke, woke up on my 21st, birth, my 21st birthday, I was extremely depressed because I was like, well, what the hell do I do with the rest of my life? And again, like, you know, I'm sorry if you're not religious and you're listening to this thing, but I'm just talking about my personal experience. There's a scripture that says, I like, this is my most impactful, prof- you know, little proverb or scripture in life. It, it's a very simple one. It doesn't even make sense the first time you read it, but it says, I lie down and sleep. And when I wake up in the morning, it's because God sustains me. And what I take that to mean is, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what I'm going for. The only ring that I can recognize is because I trust in someone who knows stuff better than me. And I have to trust in him to put my direction, faith, and life in that. Because I'm Boromir. I'm an idiot who's done everything wrong. And finally, this, like learning that it's my friends. It's, it's doing what's right, even if it costs you everything. Maybe you have to buy a stupid bigger cage for your reptile. Or maybe you need to call somebody that you have destroyed your relationship with and make that right. Maybe something big like that. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm Boromir trapped in his death moment ever since I was 21. I woke up that day and I didn't know why. And I can't tell you the answer to why I'm alive today, except that God woke me up this morning. You know, think about, this is the way I think about it. When you go to sleep and you completely lose consciousness, you can try to be in control of your life and do all these, you know what I mean? Like, I'm the man, I got the hustle, I got the business, I got the whatever. That's an illusion. When you go to sleep, you lose consciousness. How many people die in their sleep every night? You think they had a decision about that? They just went to sleep and never woke up. I think someone intentionally woke me up this morning, and I don't know why. The only ring I see, I can't see it for myself. I just, my life experience, scripture, my relationship with God tells me what that ring is. And I I don't see it myself. I can't see it. So I have to just, by faith, do what I think is right. 
because for some reason, God woke me up this morning and gave me life today. And you know what? When I go to sleep tonight, I might not wake up tomorrow. We got plans, best laid plans of mice and men. We're going to do a talk about superdoors in the morning. And then the morning after that, I'll wake up and I'll fly home to see my wife and kids. But you know what? Maybe that won't happen. It hasn't happened before for a lot of people throughout history. I don't know why I'm here today. I, I feel like I have this moment and I might not have the next. And I have to be okay with everything I do moment to moment because it might be my last. As far as I'm concerned, I have to ask how old I am. 1983, I was born. What, I, I never remember my own age because that's not really it important. Sounds like 38. 38, right? Yeah, okay. So I was supposed to die at 28, 21, before I was 21, just according to my perspective on life. It was a weird one, but I had it. And now I'm 38. You know how many days happen between 21 and 38 years old where you wake up and you're like, shit, I woke up. I'd have preferred not to. Oh, my God. What do I do morbid. today? Oh. Now, now here, I know, I know, hole. listen to me. I, I'm not saying that I have that thought every day when I woke up. And I, and I appreciate your, like, concern for my mental being in that. I just didn't think it would happen. And I don't know why it happened. It's not that I'm depressed and I want to die. It's not that. It's not that at all. I just thought I would. My question is, why? What's the purpose of me existing today? To make my life better. So you better keep doing it for as long <laughs> no. as we're fucking live. I love, you. I love you. I don't want someone to listen to this podcast and think, oh my God, I should write Garrett a big message because he's suicidal. No, I don't I, think you're suicidal. I did at all. that in the I'm past. Just giving you I've one, outgrown that. One very selfish reason why you're here. Yeah. And that's for me. Good for okay? you. So yeah. you keep on waking up so we can have some fucking good times like we've been having for I the love last that. while. So I love that. You. But you have to realize, too. And everybody else that I know that likes you. I, I'm glad. I, yeah, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Because <laughs> I'm cocky son of a bitch that way. But listen, <laughs> but that is a burden that, oh, I, sure, yeah. that I, I wake I up for. I demand a lot of the people I know. There's no doubt about it. If you're not gonna give, you're not gonna live up to the demands I have. You might as well kick rocks. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, but that's the thing is that that you that you wake up and you're like, boy, I got a lot of people that need me today, and that becomes, oh sure, tough. Oh yeah, no doubt. So I'll ask you. So that's my perspective. I just wanted to lay it out for you. Yeah, it's a good and one. I, I I feel like we've talked to we've skirted around this issue a lot on the podcast, and I don't know what it is about you, Bill, and you, Caleb, but apparently the best podcast we ever had, according to you, Brian, was the last time we were here, and here we are again, getting into it. I know you love this stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. So my question for you is, because I can't answer it, what's my ring? I I already told you. You're just, you're just not affected. You don't have a ring that affects you. You, you're, you're, it doesn't affect you. This is my perspective on you. It doesn't affect you. I don't know how many times I can say that. I can say it a lot. But that's, okay. a, you know, there's a ring out there. It's affecting a lot of people. It's not affecting you. Samwise Gamgee. There you okay. go. What's the, what do you mean? Sam was not the only not one in the story. He's like, okay, he's like, he's like, what's oh, this, he's like, what's this burden? Like let me help you. Gamgee. Let me help you with this burden. What is this burden you can't? Because I'll help you like you're my friend. Let's, let me help you with it. I'll carry it for you. You want me to? I don't care. What is it? This thing that's so like he always has an understanding of what you know, but he doesn't truly understand he what it is. He yeah. doesn't truly understand like what is it? He just knows that there's this thing that is like gonna bring about the downfall of everything he cares about, and so he wants to help. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't understand exactly what it is. It, in, it's they make it easy in the movie because it's a little physical ring. He's like, oh, it's this ring. We gotta go destroy it. No, obviously. I know, but it, it, it represents. But it doesn't stuff. affect that's a good, him. That's a good. Perspective. That's perfect. Uh, but dude, I would. 100%. I don't think it's perfect, and I'll tell you why. It in a is minute. perfect. <laughs> it's good. It's very good. But uh, what do you think? You, I mean, you know. I think care. that, like What's how you said, you've conquered smaller rings in the past. I think one of those smaller ones was the ring that you maybe overlooked. But yeah, you the the ring wantingness that everyone else has is drawn to. You're kind of not, which is a blessing I think where you're not like the, how you said maybe the older rings you conquered like wanting wealth and wanting fame or whatever those other small rings may be but overcoming those two now you have nothing you don't have to worry about any other temptation you can just kind of live your life knowing that oh I'm not reaching back for those for the ring again I'm not reaching right back to where I wanted to be 
there's something there's something going on. And I, I what I like is that there's a parallel in Lord of the Rings for this. That's beautiful, what you just said, Caleb. That would be awesome. But there's some like lack of ability to rest in peace in it for me. I think you guys could probably see that by now. So this is the difference yeah, between yeah, you're Sam. You're not supposed Gambit. to be resting in peace right now, bro. That's okay. what I'm, that was I said earlier. You're, right. you're here to help us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, as much as it's a burden for you to wake up in the morning, I, I'm okay with that. Deal with this. I'm okay already. with holding. <laughs> I'm okay with holding that up. But but this is the difference in you know the silly analogy or whatever. That's really apparently not so silly because we've been going on and on and on about it. Samwise Gamgee doesn't understand at the end when Bilbo Baggins and Frodo Baggins go off with the elves into eternity. And they have this, even though they conquered it, they did a good job, they beat the ring, they melted it down, that was hard. They gave piece of their heart and soul to it, but they did it, they accomplished it. And the rest of the world rested in the new age that they brought about where that evil was destroyed and the two of them could not rest in that. Do you remember that part of the movie? Yeah, when they, well, yes, when they and left like, with the elves. Yeah, and they go off, and like Bilbo's old, but Frodo's young. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he leaves, and Sam's like, what? You know yeah, what I mean? Mary and he's and like, Pippin, they're all like, he's like, there's this weird kind of like, talk about burden, darkness, strangeness thing that I've been carrying forever. And the only way for me to escape it is to leave this, even though you bring about peace for everyone and blah, 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 but I don't get it until I leave, right? Like they went with the elves into eternity or whatever, yeah. the land of immortality or whatever, mm-hmm. because there just wasn't anything for them here. And Frodo, you know, and, and like Sam and he, and all those guys, they missed them because of it and all that. And they were kind of the heroes that saved the world, really, you know, to a lesser extent, Bilbo. But he understood the burden that Frodo carried, you know, but that part of the movie. And I can get what you're saying about Samwise, you know, like, that's good. But but there's still this element of like, whew, this world carries a big burden. I'm ready to be rid of it. That I really relate to, which is strange. Okay, so it does affect you. I take it back. It yeah. just doesn't affect you in the same it way. It doesn't tempt me anymore. Yeah. It's, it's certainly affected me. It doesn't tempt me. Yeah. It's gone. I don't want it. I'd never, I'm happy, you know. Yeah. But there's some weird lasting thing. Strange. Because it's still there. Whether whether it affects you in the same way as it does, it, whether it affects you the way it affects a lot of people or not, I, I guess I, I'm completely wrong in my statement in saying that it doesn't affect you. What I guess I guess it's what I meant by that effect, is, is it, it doesn't affect you. It doesn't, it doesn't affect your motives and goals. No, you say it doesn't affect your your actions, mm-hmm. but it still affects you emotionally in the fact that there's that it's still affecting the rest of the world as you're living in it. So. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have an answer. I, yeah, it's something I think about a lot, you know, like, you know, whenever I get it. Uh, honestly, today, we didn't do anything. We didn't go to the Phoenix Herb Society. I mean, we did eat breakfast. So yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, swam, I swam in the pool and did this little I swam exercise. In the pool. In I was the first down the slide. Yep. <laughs> Still the but only we one didn't outside. do anything that carried any kind of burden with it. And that's the first day for me in a very long time of not having anything to do. And tomorrow is back to reality. Got to do a talk, got to do this, got to do that. So I appreciate you guys for providing me with a day that doesn't have any kind of a burden, just like a yeah, truly me too. Me too, 100%. chill day. That's great. Yeah, I don't get a lot I, of those. I, I, it's like I said, it was, it was a great day. It was a, it was a productive day. And I think everybody needed a, a nice little breather. It seemed like uh, nobody was gung ho on, going here, going there, and, and that would have chewed up the day and it wouldn't have been the same. Yeah. This, yeah, was, this was the time for us to all... We could have easily filled it with stuff, but instead we pretty much sat on the back porch all day. Yep. <laughs> Ain't nothing... No and I, sometimes there. I feel like people would be anyway. disappointed in me in that or whatever, that I had a day like that because I could have achieved more or whatever, but... 
no, no, no. And, uh, you know, honestly, I did do a couple of things that kicked things off. The bank, the new facility, a calendar, you know, stuff like that. We, we talked about some fun new ideas, you and yeah. I, Bill. Mm-hmm. So there was some productivity that came out of it, but there was no burden. That wasn't a pre- pre-planned thing. It was just stuff yeah, that kind of happened. Um, some people are able to achieve that at some point every day. Well, I just need to learn and learn to just be like, I, you know, okay. So I woke up today for some reason, and I don't need to know why. I'm just here, and I'm going to do me to the best of my ability. And, yep. and apparently, and literally, I have been doing that for how many days? You guys can calculate it. Put it on our, our Facebook page or whatever. How many days from 21 to 38 years old have I woken up and been like, okay, pick up that heavy backpack and carry it today? Uh, you know, 17 times 365 plus one for every fourth year. There you go. So somebody do that math and throw it on a thing. But I'll tell you what, that many days I, I've woken up and done it. And I'm, you know, you, I met you in the middle of that. I didn't meet you before it or after that or anything like that. And you said there was some benefit to you. You know what I mean? And I'm not like, sometimes I feel like I'm being completely selfless because, or, or selfish because it, in not recognizing the blessings that I have because I have an amazing wife, a beautiful family, the best support on Patreon and the reptile industry who are my friends because I don't have time for any other ones. Um, But my family, you know, not just my wife and kids, but my my extended family is amazing. I have so many blessings in life, you know, but there's a weird burden. There's a weird burden. So, you know, I I feel like I'm being selfish to not be able to sometimes enjoy the things that I have. Which you is know. so opposite of what a lot, a lot of people is for what is selfish for a lot of other people is like, I'm so selfish to it's selfish of them to just only like just enjoy that and not worry about other things or the burdens. It's, it's interesting, it's very interesting. You're an interesting case study for me sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I and it's not that I don't enjoy life or any of that kind of stuff because I do. There's so like today was amazing. You know, if I just had today, if you took it and it's a little glass bubble like the one on top of that hockey thing over today, and today had no past, yeah. and no future. Uh, I'm it was overdue a great day. for a trip. To, I'm overdue for a trip to Pittsburgh, and, and that last every time I've come out so far, it's just been like we're like we're burdening heavy. <laughs> it's like, it's I a mean, great city. We're, we're having good times. Don't get me wrong. What we're mm-hmm. doing with some stuff, we're always like we got to get this done and get this done. We've done some little. Anyway, I, I think I just realized that it's, it's my turn to come out, right? Is that the thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's your turn. You should here. come out when we go out, and then we can do the girls' podcast. Ooh. Well, you'll never get Hillary out of Alabama. Yeah, maybe. Alabama. As long as we're pit stopping in Hawaii for a couple weeks. Why did I say Alabama? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I took right. a detour. <laughs> <laughs> Layover. Yeah, it'll be fun. I'll tell you what, they're behind every great man there's an even better woman. <laughs> Agreed? Isn't that not true? I sure as hell you disagree, dude. Jeez. Not a chance. What would we do without them? And thank God we all have big ones because size matters or we wouldn't have got high quality <laughs> dames <laughs> like the ones we got. <laughs> I'm cut it right there, by the way. Podcast is over. Cheers. Thank you guys for being on. Oh, thank you. Searchable as a reptile.